Hi, this is uh, Bob from Hobby Concepts back with this amazing excavator from RC Four Wheel Drive. This spectacular machine, all 60 pounds of it or so, is truly amazing. Uh, last video I did, I kind of showed how I got the radio programmed and everything working, and today I'm going to install a beer USM sound system. I'll just kind of do a quick overview of the beer, not a lot. Uh, but we'll get it in, we'll get it working, and just kind of um, show you how the beer system works. It, it came out spectacular in this. The sound is impressive, and uh, I think you'll really like it. So, let's get started. As I get going on my, uh, my sound system for this uh, RC four-wheel drive excavator, uh, I am going to use the beer sound module. And so I've got my computer here with the beer sound teacher software loaded up on it. I've got my radio, I've got a speaker, I've got a uh, USB cable for programming the sound system, although not technically required. You can use, you can unpop the um, uh, memory card and put it in the computer that way. I just like doing it with that because it's quicker. And I've got the manual on a, on a uh, iPad here. And I got, I got Winston barking in the background because mom just left and he's not happy. So there's the diagram for it. So I'm going to kind of go through and explain what all these things are. So let's take a look at this beer USM sound module. I love these things. They're really small, um, which is good because this excavator, even though it's a huge machine, doesn't have a lot of room left inside of it. Um, it's capable of storing just about any kind of sound you want. And it also has outputs for lighting, uh, so I can do pretty much everything on the machine with this one module. Also, they have a very nice, small, high-power speaker that will fit in the unit really good. So those are the two items I'm going to use as the basics for my sound system. I'm going to go ahead and kind of show how I lay this out, and I'll do it all on the bench here so you can see it. And then I'll probably pop back and forth between the computer screen and this just to show you how it works. Well to start with um, I've got this cable and this is just a patch cable. It's got a male connector on each end and I've got it plugged into the um, iBus S bus output on this receiver. So it plugs in with the negative going that direction in the one marked servo. This then will become all the output I need to do everything with the beer. And that's true of all their units, whether it's the sound module or the SFR1, which has the speed control. One cable from the receiver to the unit is all you need. Now, in order to do that, oh, geez, that thing's heavy. I had to go, and I'll go back to the main menu just to show you. On this unit, you go to the system menu, you go to output mode, and then you just click S bus. Okay, and what that does is that tells it then to send the signal to this cable. I used a really long cable so I can just set all my stuff out here on the bench um, so we can see how it works. Okay, so my basic module is here, and I've got this cable that we just talked about coming from the S bus, and it plugs in to input 4. And then once you do that, you need to set up in software for this to um, use the S bus input. So that's all my input. Now there's servo outputs or speed control outputs. Um, we're not going to probably use many of those with this machine just due to the nature of it not being a truck. The speaker plugs in here. I'll go ahead and plug that in. You can actually have two speakers. We only need one. And so that is basically the connections to our unit. Now we need power to work it. To start with, it's got plus and minus power inputs here. So you can run it off of the uh, 5 volt receiver power or you can run it off something else. Now I'm going to run it off of the 3 cell battery in the unit. And the reason I'm going to do that is because then I can have an alarm built into the speaker if the battery goes low, I can 
trigger a response, like I could have a, a sound that says your battery is low, or I can just shut the sound off or turn on an alarm. But with this unit, it, they caution you it does not have a low voltage alarm built in, so uh, this takes care of that low voltage alarm. But for testing, I'm just going to hook it to a receiver battery. So this plugs in here, plus and minus and those just push down and the wires go in okay so there's the basic setup that I'm gonna proceed with okay so I can just plug my battery in see the light come on so now the unit is powered up <clears throat> that's the basics of getting the thing set up now as I mentioned earlier I can pull out this SD card to program it or I can use this USB cord, plug it into my laptop here, and it just plugs into the unit right here. So now anytime I make a change on the computer software, it will update this. So let me go through what I've... I'm, this is not meant to be a, a complete... Um, tutorial on this um, system. I'm going to do those later. Yes, I'm going to do them. I know everybody's been bugging me. I'll do them on the SFR1 and on this. This is just how I'm setting it up for this machine. So let me take a look at the computer screen. We'll go, shoot, go through and I'll show you what I've done. Here's my computer screen with the Sound Teacher software. Beer has a um, sound for a Volvo excavator. Uh, it's called a bagger. The German word bagger is excavator. Uh, so the sounds were basically already set up for Volvo Excavator. So I just downloaded the sound program and dropped it in. And I can test those sounds by just poking on this little green arrow. So there's the idle. And start, uh, st stopping sound. So I can see what they sound like right here on the screen. Uh, engine sound 2, I don't have any additional sound. Okay, this is <laughs> interesting. Okay, excavators work a little differently than, than normal construction equipment. The throttle doesn't work <clears throat> when you go faster or slower. You set the throttle, which runs the hydraulic pump, and then moves the excavator. So you really don't, you really have the throttle separated from, from how it moves. But my customer wanted you know, a couple position throttle, but he wanted the tracks to squeak. So this sound is the squeaking track sound from a World War II Panther tank. And uh, that's what it sounds like. So I dropped that in there. Uh, random sounds, I don't have any, but I could do, you know, like uh, valve releases or something like that. Wave player, I can do music. Okay, configuration. This is where we do all the work. So you can see here the main screen. Now, this is what I was talking about with the battery voltage. I can set this to like 9.9 .9 volts. And then at under voltage, I can do something, uh, whatever. Right now, I've got it set to turn the sound off, which will be a, a note that, okay, I need to do something. Uh, the engine sound is right here, and it's basically comes preset up so I didn't need to worry about that. S bus. So I turned on the S bus. <clears throat> now what I've done is on prop one, prop one is always the throttle channel. I I put that on switch seven, which is this switch right here. Okay, so this will be my idle, half speed, and full speed. Um, prop 9 and 10 are my two tracks. Okay, so I set those up for the squeaking sound. Channel 8 I set up for the um, for the uh, uh, engine sound off and on. So here's how you do that. So let's take a look at Prop 8. Prop 8 is the switch right here. And so engine sound off, engine sound on. So basically that turns the sound off and on. Prop 7, let's see, Prop 9 is my track. 
and my track is additional sound one. I know it's a little confusing, but but uh, that's that turns on the track squeaking sound and prop 10 also the same thing turns on the track squeaking sound. So that's just a little quick sample of how this is set up. The neat thing about the beer system is it's so flexible you can do anything you want and you can change it easily later. So let's take a look then at how this actually operates as I drop it into the machine. Now to transfer the data I just poke that button it transfers it to the beer the beer is hooked up to the machine so I can see how it works one little thing I can also do is I can plug in this volume control pot which I'm going to do plugs in right there if you've got a rotary knob on your radio you can also control the volume from the radio. This one doesn't have it, so I'm just going to have it so you can set it in with this. Okay, so now remember we have the engine start sound here. Engine off. Engine on. Okay. So there's our engine sound. Our track squeaking sounds. I've got the excavator propped up on a 2x4. So that's a pretty good squeak. Matter of fact, the squeak is maybe just a little loud compared to the rest of the sounds. So I'm probably going to dial that down a little bit. But yes, I got everything. Everything the way I want it. So my sound system now is ready to install in the uh, unit. I'm going to turn that track down a little bit. I'll show you how I do that. So back on the computer screen, see I'm engine sounds, I'm additional sound. And there, remember, is my track sound. And over here it says volume 100%. So I can actually just turn that down. And let's just turn it down to, say, 80%. Now that I made a change, I can just go down here, transfer project data. And over here it'll show that it's transferring. It takes a little bit of time. We'll transfer that. And what that does is that reduces the volume of the squeaking track sound in comparison to the other sounds. So that's that's how simple it is to change things on this system. So now this is ready to install. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to tap into the the main battery to power this because I can go up to 14 volts and so I'll have to reset the alarm on the computer and download that. I'm also got a shorter patch cable here to use when I install it. So I'm going to take a look at the inside of the machine and see where I'm going to fit this. Kind of show you where I'm going to put it. Before I install it, I forgot to talk about the lights. So for the lights, I go to the Configuration tab, and I go to the Outputs tab. And you can see here that I've got light outputs. Now there's 10 outputs on this beer unit. Um, there are these pins right here, so you can have up to 10 different lighting functions. And each one of those can be a different thing, like they could be a turn signal, they could be a brake light, they could be a headlight, high beam, low beam, whatever. Um, so I just have output one as parking light. The name doesn't really mean anything, it's just the intensity is set to 100%. So I did that, and in the, um, in the configuration setup for the switches... Um, I set those up on, let's see, did I put them on switch 6 or 7? Switch 6, so output 1, which was the parking lights. And that is this switch right here. Okay, so when I switch that on, the lights will go on. 
and what I've done here is I just quickly plugged in an LED to the unit so you could see it and yes so that's how my lights are going to turn on and off obviously if this was a truck and it had turn signals and brake lights you could um, plug those in but all I need to do is turn the lights on and off so that's what I've got set up well you see what I mean about a tight fit these are all my light wires and I haven't trimmed them or anything I left them long so that'll be neat and organized this is the um, battery connector and you can see it goes to this terminal block so I will pull the two wires off of there to run the beer and I'll use this little fuse in line to it also. Uh, the beer unit will sit down in here. Leaves plenty of room for my battery. And the speaker, as I mentioned earlier, will just drop in over on this side. It's a tight fit, but it works in there and the side's graded, so that's where everything will fit. I'm gonna, I, I don't know how I'm going to mount the speaker. I haven't figured that out yet may have to drill a little hole, I don't know. And uh, this I'll put down with double stick tape and I'll just put the volume control somewhere where it's reachable. Probably somewhere out here because it's it's easy to get to. So I'll trim up these wires, I'll hook those to the output and uh, get this stuff mounted in here. I got the speaker tucked down in there. I actually, uh, the slots lined up with the holes in the speaker, so all I had to do was just enlarge the top of the slot just a tiny bit with a file, and I could put two bolts in it. I really wanted it solid so it doesn't vibrate. And then the speaker wire I'll just run across, plug into the beer. I'm going to clean this up and add the wiring for the power. I, uh, I've got my two power wires for the beer plugged right into the um, same board where the battery plugs in. So that'll be battery voltage plus and minus out. I've got all my light wires combined, so I have a plus and a minus. The minus goes to the pin one on the beer. And then I have my speaker wire. So I just have to plug those three in and mount this in here and mount the volume control. Now I do need to um, change the voltage cutoff so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll get this mounted. So I've got my little board ready to install. My positive power goes to number one. Negative goes to number two. This board's actually labeled pretty well. You can see the plus and the minus right here. The plus for the light wiring goes into number 8. That's positive voltage out. They're negative switched. So the negative wires go to pin 1, this pin right here. The speaker plugs into the speaker port. And I put a shorter lead from my receiver, which plugs into port number four. So everything's plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and plug in a battery and test it. Actually, I can go ahead and do that now. Turn the radio on. Move the camera back a little here so you can see the whole thing. Plug in a battery. Okay. Rotation's working. And the lights on and off. Okay, we got it working. Now I'll go ahead and mount that in. mounted it down, I took a little piece of aluminum angle, taped it up against the wall 
so it would keep this from tipping over. And then my battery just drops in here nicely. So uh, I think I'm ready to go. The last thing I'm going to do before I button it up is I'm going to put a couple strips of this uh, Velcro, the padded part, down here on the bottom just to provide some padding for the battery. And uh, then we'll put the top deck back on. So the excavator is finished. Just slide the battery in here. Power it up. Okay, so. Our lights. We've got our engine idle up. Obviously, the squeaky tracks are there. Everything works really good. This thing has got just an unbelievable amount of power. Okay. Lights off. Engine off. Well, I am really happy with how this turned out. It is an amazing piece of equipment. I just still can't get over how cool it is. Um, it's, uh, it's heavy, it's big, it's very impressive, it works great. I just really can't find anything to complain about at all. Um, so there we go, the excavator with the beer sound system, and the sound sounds beautiful. I don't know how it will come through on the, on the video, but it sounds great here. So uh, that wraps up this video. Um, I will be doing one of the bulldozers in a couple weeks. I'm waiting for more uh, B or sound systems to come in. So uh, watch for that video. Also, I'm going to do a custom grand hauler build here in the next couple weeks. And uh, I'll have a video up on that. Plus, I have a new video coming on installing the centering kit in the uh, FlySky radios. And that should be up in a few days. So lots of stuff going on here. Um, it's, it's just a lot of fun. I'm having a great time. I really appreciate all your comments. I appreciate everybody who watches my channel. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Check out hobbyconcepts.net and have fun with RC. Thanks for watching.